Hello everybody, my name is Laurie and welcome along to another edition of DR Boxing Weekly, the show that covers all the relevant stories in boxing. Now before we get underway, let me quickly introduce my two guests. To my right, Mr. James Toot in the house. What are you saying, bro? What are you saying, man? Happy to be here. I get a round of applause as well. <laughs> and to my left, he is known as the voice of reason, aka Mr. Nick Francis. Well gone, well gone, well gone. Woo! Now, those of you who are regular to DR Boxing Weekly may have noticed that we are one guest short. That is Shane Willoughby. Shane cannot be with us today. He's actually getting ready to go out to Las Vegas, where he will be in attendance for the massive fight this weekend. So shout out to Shane Willoughby. I know he's um, doing all he can to get himself ready for that big day on Saturday. So yeah, man, hope it goes well. Hope it goes well. So as I alluded to, um, this weekend, another massive night of boxing taking place over in Las Vegas in America. Uh, in my view, in my humble opinion, the most anticipated fight in boxing since Mayweather Pacquiao back in 2015, that was eight years ago. Um, and in fact, I'm gonna go a little bit further than that. I'll say that for me anyway, this is the biggest fight of the decade in terms, maybe not in terms of Numbers. generating revenue, but certainly in terms of the two fighters, the occasion, what it means to the division, what it means to pound for pound. Um, this is an absolutely massive fight. We're talking Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford for the undisputed and unified welterweight championship of the world. And when you consider that this year, I think I'm sure you would agree with me, guys, it's already been a great year for boxing. To have this fight um, as the biggest fight of the year is certainly something. I mean, if I could just go through and list some of the fights that we've had this year, I think you would agree that this has been a great year for boxing. So. Liam Smith versus Eubank, that was a great night. Baturbiev Yard. Lee Wood versus Maurizio Lara. David Benavides versus Caleb Plant. Joe Joyce versus Zili Zhang. Joe Cordina Rachmanov. Javonta Davis, Ryan Garcia. Katie Taylor, Chantel Cameron. Devin Haney, Lomachenko. Josh Taylor versus Teofimo Lopez. And of course, recently, Stephen Fulton versus Naya Winner. Do you mm -hmm. agree with me that this is um, it's been a great year for boxing so It's been so a far. phenomenal year, and finally we're actually starting to see some of these bigger fights actually happen. Is this a changing of the guard for boxing? I don't know. Aside from one specific fight <laughs> that we're all waiting for, every other fight actually seems to be getting made, and Which these is... promoters are finally <laughs> doing it. It's fury, isn't it? It's fury, is it? <laughs> Heavyweights take note, man. The rest of the divisions are putting you guys to shame. No, yeah. they are. But yeah. What makes this fight so big, we just spoke about the... Um, Ring Magazine pound for pound list. One and two, Inoue, Usyk. Three and four, Crawford and Spence. Mm. And Actually, you know what? Um, James wasn't able to be with us for our previous show, but just asking you quickly, your pound for pound number one in light of Naya Inoue's totally dominant win over Stephen Fulton. Alexander Usyk. And for the reasons I stated yesterday when we were speaking, for me, pound for pound is the amount of power, the amount of skill, the amount of attributes you have designated down to your weight and I think there's such a big weight class jump going from cruiserweight to heavyweight and when Alexander Usyk is fighting people like Anthony Joshua who are 20-30 pounds naturally heavier than him six inches taller than him I think his skill disparity is so big that it warrants him being number one you know what you make a very good case and you did make a very interesting point when you talked about um the jump up in weights being uh, it's a lot different I yeah. would argue and I'm not trying to diminish anything that Naya Inoue has done he's a four weight world champion but I think it's fair to say that if you come up from cruiserweight it's to heavyweight that weight upwards yeah, because it's, there's it's no actual jump. limit because yeah. even yeah. natural yeah. heavyweights like Deontay Wilder aren't as big as Fury or AJ let alone a natural cruiserweight like Usyk jumping up an extra three, four, five inches in height. It's yeah, so no, no, you do make a very good point then. But um, so you're going with Usyk. Usyk. Right, okay. Um, for me, it's still very much, I, I, what I said was I was gonna wait until the outcome of this fight yeah. before I announced my power. Well, the Crawford power. fight. The Crawford and Spence fight, which is the fight we're talking about. And let's get straight into it. I got to tailor the tape I want to read out before I get the guys. Um, opinions on the fight so let's start with errol spence i think it's fair to say that he's headlining it it's a pbc promotion he's the name that's first on the flyer although terence crawford would probably have something to say about that under normal circumstances so errol spence um born in texas america he's 30 years old he's nicknamed the truth he's got a height of five foot nine and a half so he's quite a big guy for a while to wait 
a uh, reach of 72 inches. He's a southpaw. He's had 28 fights, 28 wins, 22 KOs, no losses, no draws. Notable wins, uh, Jordanis Ugas, who won by KO, stopped him. Danny Garcia won on points. Sean Porter won points. Mikey Garcia beat him up, won on points. Lamont Peterson, I saw him break down and stop Lamont Peterson. Well, you retired, same type of thing. He won the title in England. I was there that day. Back in 2017, he stopped Special. Kelbrook to win the title. Very, very good fighter, very accomplished, very good amateur as well, um, fought in the Olympics in this country back in 2012. So let's now have a look at Terence Crawford. He was born in Omaha, Nebraska in the US. He's 35 years old, so he's a bit older than uh, Errol Spence. He's five foot eight, 74 inch reach. Um, he's listed as a southpaw, but he can switch it, so he, he can fight both stances. 39 fights, 39 wins, 30 KOs, sorry, yeah, 30 KOs, mm -hmm. no losses, no draws, um, and he's a three-weight world champion. He started off at lightweight, beat Ricky Burns for the title, went up to light world to weight, cleaned out that division, um, knocked out Julius Ndongo to win the light world to weight titles, cleaned out that division, stepped up to world to weight, beat Jeff Horn, who had just beaten Manny Pacquiao to win the title, took the title of Horn and has won all his defenses by stoppage. Notable wins, David Avenesian, very good win, won by KO. Sean Porter won by KO. Kel Brook won by KO. Green Machine, um, I, don't, I can't really pronounce it. Cavaliuskas. So. Yeah, yeah. But he's a very good fighter, and Terence Crawford stopped him, so that's another good win. Amir Khan, you oh, guys know Amir Khan? Going for my heart. Jose Benavides Jr., another good win, KO. Jeff Horn, I mentioned earlier, KO. Victor Postal, one on points when he won a version of the uh, light world to weight title. And of course, it all started when he beat Ricky Burns back in this country several years ago. He beat Ricky Burns on points, which is a very good win. In fact, Crawford says that that is one of his best career wins, the win over Ricky Burns. So, tells you how much it means to him. Right, okay, so who do we start with? Let's start with James. <laughs> You've seen the tail of the tape. You know the fight as well. What do you think for this fight? Do you, th think do you First of all, do you agree with me that it's the biggest fight in boxing since 2015? <sighs> since 2015, it depends. Which was it Mayweather depends. Pacquiao. It, it depends because, you know me, I like... It. I, I can derive Don't excitement in different things. You know, McGregor Mayweather for me was, <laughs> was a massive fight. Uh, if you're talking pure boxing and what it means for boxing as a whole, for the division, for the sport, and you're talking about two fighters on their accolades and two of the best, arguably of 10, 20 years within that weight class, then this fight for sure. And it, it's been a long, long time in the making. Three, four years, there's been car crashes, there's been so many different things that have, that have held this fight up. Yeah, some people were suggesting thought, that the fight is a little bit too late, it should have been made it a bit is, earlier. It, for me, I did feel that, and I did feel at the time like, maybe it's taken a bit of the shine away from it, but I think it's just such a special case like with uh, Pacquiao versus Mayweather where even if you do it five, six years after the point where it should have happened, because people have been waiting so long to see these two finally face off, it just makes the fight. And now that it's coming around the corner, I cannot wait for it. And I don't actually think it's quite as close as people think. I think this is a Terence Crawford. Well, I'll hold, your, hold your prediction. Oh, um, sorry. But, but let me ask Nick, let, over to you. So Crawford's 35, Spence is 30. Some people might suggest that this fight is... Actually, I think Spence is a bit older than 30. Uh, I think 33. it's 33, yeah. Do you think that um, maybe this fight should be made sooner so it's not quite as big as it could have been what's just your thoughts on it yeah i think if it was made a couple of years ago we hadn't had the return of tyson fury we didn't have the dominant Usyk. clean Usyk was around the time of cleaning out the division but he hadn't stepped up and made his name so it's not just that the shine has gone away from the fight it's that other people have started we're now talking about a new way who wasn't the same person two three years ago three years ago these two would have been really the top two and those other well probably with Canelo and those other names were just starting to make their names so they've opened the door to allowing these other people to come through but they are still two of the most technical boxers the most powerful boxers two of the best boxers on the planet and the closest in terms of their prime the closest in terms of their their technical ability like we said before nobody else on that list has got people apart from maybe the, the lightweight division which is quite stacked no other division has this type of head-to-head -head. Mm. obviously the heavyweights we want to see it 
but the heavyweight belts have changed guard over the last couple of years. These two have been steadfast, undefeated for a long, long time. We all remember that video of them bumping into each other backstage mm. in 2018. That was five years ago now. <laughs> and that was, they were both so, I think the frustration for this is that when you see that video, you can see they're both game for this fight. Mm. No one is ducking the other one. I have not seen many videos where two guys are just so up for fighting and it's promotional differences. Yeah, I think yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the frustration. It's promotional differences. When we're looking at the Tyson Fury situation, other situations, we can look at a fighter, we can attribute blame and we can disagree about where we attribute that blame. But here we're really looking at the promotion of promotional businesses and not necessarily at the fighters because they got themselves on the phone and said, let's do this fight. You know, we know Terence Crawford is trying to get himself out of deals and, and push his promoters to get in these, those big fights that were complaining about making losses on him and different things like that. So they, the fighters themselves have really been pushing for these fights. So, you know, hopefully it's, it's been worth that wait. But mm. I'm just so I glad mean, we've got I'm it. I'm pretty sure you guys will agree with me. It, it could be classified as being a bit late, but I would yeah. say better late than never. Very late. And I, I would... still think that the two of them have retained enough of their skills yeah. to still make this a very, very, very watchable fight. It kind of goes along with what we were talking about yesterday about different weight classes and when you actually peak, what age that is. Would you say for welterweight, it's obviously if we were talking the, the really lightweights like Inoue, 35, you're talking, okay, you're way past your peak now physically. Welterweight is getting up yeah. there. Not what there, what yeah. kind of age would you say is your peak performance level? Depending I would career, argue like that 30. it's probably about 31, 32. Yeah. So you're looking at a 33-year-old and a 35-year-old Terence Crawford getting in there just a little bit past their peak for me. So I don't think you're going to mm. see them at their very, very best in the ring is the only thing I would use to... But also Terence Crawford kind of is a home. consummate professional who is one of those guys. We're lucky that it is Terence Crawford because he's one of those people that stays in shape all year round, mm, in and out of season. He, he, you know, he's always in fantastic shape. Um, so I don't think it will have that much of a bearing. And he's been on an absolute tear of knockout wins. Mm. Um, and, and let's be honest a lot as of well, points victories neither earlier in his career. overly active, yeah. um, which some would say might be to their detriment. But in terms of their freshness, it doesn't mean that, they, you know I mean? They're like- Wear and tear. Wear and tear mm. is, is overly mm -hmm. there. But um, what I would say as well is that they've retained enough of their faculties and abilities and their skills to still make this a very competitive fight. What, what will happen is whatever happens in this fight at this point in time, just off the back of what you're saying about retaining their skill and their faculties is that there will not be any, with Mayweather and, and Pacquiao, there was some sort of, oh, if it was a few years earlier, he didn't get the best version of Pacquiao. That won't happen with this mm. fight. No, They've no. got enough retained here that whoever wins this fight, depending on how the nature of the win, obviously if it's disputed, then it's disputed. But if one of them wins conclusively, then that's a conclusive winner. We will probably still see a rematch because it's modern boxing and that's just the way mm. things are. But it's not going to be like a Pacquiao Mayweather situation where it's like, well, if you'd fought him three years ago, mm -hmm. he probably would have beat mm -hmm. you. There, I there's think none the reason of that. why people said enough. that about Pacquiao as well is because let's not forget that he before drunk. he fought Mayweather, he got absolutely mm. stretched out by Marquez, Marquez and, yeah. and he lost yeah. a few fights whereas both of these guys are coming into the ring unbeaten they're both coming into the ring full of confidence I would also say that neither of them have been in what I call out and out wars that would have taken years off their career so they're still relatively fresh given um, where they are in the game at the moment but let's talk in terms of the fight itself let's start with Nick um, how do you see this fight playing out I said all along, I said from the very beginning. Don't give me your prediction just yet. But in terms <laughs> how of. Can I get, how can I tell you how I see the fight playing out if I give no, you no, my I'm prediction? No, no, I'm talking in terms of how you expect the other to approach guy up. the fight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for your predictions right at the end. Nick. In terms the of how you see. The approach is, is so difficult to call because. What, what tactics Ter do you expect Crawford to adopt? Terence Crawford, uh, Spence is probably going to be the aggressor. I expect Spence to be the aggressor. Terence Crawford is notoriously a slow starter, an information gatherer. They're both relatively slow starters, but Crawford more so, I think, than, than Spence. I, I think that's a good point. I think um, Spence is probably more likely to win some of the early exchanges, and I think Crawford is more than happy to give up some of those earlier exchanges to get that time in, to get that pace in just right, and then in the middle round start to step on the gas, and then that's when we'll see you know, the fight sort of explode. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them both be a little bit apprehensive and, and just try to time each bit other respectful. a little bit and a bit, bit respectful because yeah, you're going in, there go with, in there. they're going in there with, you know, serious technicians. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. James, same question to you. What tactics do you think will be deployed by both the fighters? Again, like you said, I think Terence Crawford, 
he's going to go in there. I don't want to say tentative, but he's going to be slightly reserved, I think, the early rounds. I think you're going to see Errol Spence try to step onto him, try to unleash some of his power on him and I think you're going to see an absolute clinic from Terence Crawford in that no, sense. No, no, defensively no, 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 I'm not no, no, saying no. I'm not giving the prediction but I'm saying I'm just I after think the tactics, defensively the tactics. defensively I think especially the early rounds he's not going to want to show too much he's not going to want to unleash too much and mm -hmm. similar to the way Inoue did I think you're going to see him turn up the pace round upon round upon round upon round and the more he's the more information he starts to gather the more he starts to to feel out Errol Spence the the easier it's going to become for him but it's such a tough one because I don't want to be disrespectful to Errol Spence's techniques and although I think he's the less technically defensive boxer out of the two he's still uh, it's not fair to call him a puncher because he he's got so many skills and so many different varieties of attack he can use it's going to be interesting to see how they both mm. adapt to the occasion. That's what makes mm. this so interesting. It's not mm. very easy for me to just say, oh, Errol Spence is going to go on the offense and he's going to try and rough mm. him up. He's going well, to you say that, uh, and that was one of the reasons why I asked you guys for um, your tactical assessments, because Errol Spence has made no secret. He said his, his game plan is to break Terence Crawford. He's actually said it several occasions, so I'm going to break him. This is not going to be about skills. I'm going to come forward, I'm going to go to the body, and I'm going to break him down bit by bit. It's whether he can do that. Um, and let's face it, Errol Spence is one of the best body punchers in boxing. Um, he's known for that. Um, he also raises the question, a really good question as well, of who's the bigger puncher? Because historically we've looked at Spence as maybe more of the puncher, but Crawford's been on the tear of knockout victories. He does have a very, very good knockout record. They both do. Who is the heavier hitter? I mean, I guess, I guess we look at Spence because Spence is maybe naturally the, the slightly bigger guy. I think you'd have to say, listen, since Crawford's gone up to welterweight, he's won all his fights, including when he won the title by stoppage. I think that's seven straight stoppages at welter, which is very, very impressive, yeah. uh, especially when you consider that he started off his professional boxing journey as a lightweight. Um, so that shows you that um, he can punch very hard. He's also a very accurate puncher. And one yeah. of the things that I would say about Terence Crawford as well, he's got that killer instinct. A bit like a new ad. Once he's got you hurt, he's looking to take you out of there. And he tends to do it better than pretty much, well, if not better than everyone else. He's yeah. certainly up there in terms of the way he finishes fights. So I don't know if you could say, though, that he's a bigger one-punch hitter, if you see what I mean. It's slightly mm -hmm. different. Because um, Spence can power. bang as well. Yeah. Um, but I would say maybe you'd have to lean towards Crawford in terms of punching power, I would say. Over, over Errol Spence. Yeah, I think but he then probably who would, do you, who based do you on his record. The who do you think would have the better punch resistance? Because at 35 years of age, even if you still have the skills and you still have your faculties, you're not going to be able to take the same kind of punishment as you could earlier on in question. your career. That's a good question. And if so you, if that you, could definitely tie into Errol Spence probably having more of a chance of knocking him out. Yeah, listen, that punch resistance question has been raised and fans of Errol Spence will tell you that Crawford's been buzzed a few times uh, in his career. He definitely got buzzed by the green machine who some people said should have had a knockdown scored against him. Earlier on his career, um, Terence Crawford this is, he was seriously buzzed by Uriah Chris Gamboa down at the lighter weights. So he's been hurt a few times. Uh, Sean Porter had him hurt a few times, although not seriously hurt. Sean Porter also had um, Spence. Sorry, Errol Spence hurt as well. Yeah. So he, they've, they've both been hurt. Did you hear Sean Porter's assessment of the two? It was really interesting. Well, he, he seems to switch and change all the time. Yeah, but just yeah. his assessment, he said that... Um, uh, he's fought both of them, by the way. Yeah, he's fought yeah. both. And he said that Terence Crawford beat him at Terence Crawford's game mm. and Errol Spence beat him at his own game. So he went in against both of them trying to rough them up. Yeah. And Terence Crawford made it a boxing match and beat him in a boxing match. But Errol Spence said, OK, you want to scrap. Let's scrap then. Stayed in the pocket and beat mm. him at his own game. So yeah, I remember that, watching that for Make I mean, that he, what you yeah, will. He, he, Terence Crawford stopped Sean Porter. Very impressive win. Um, afterwards, Sean Porter's dad said that um, he didn't train for the fight as well as he did, which is why he stopped the fight. He stopped the fight at a time when a lot of people were saying, look, why Strange. didn't you stop it? Yeah. He explained that decision, said, look, he didn't want to see his son take a beating. His son had not trained to the level that he'd trained in previous fights, including for the Errol Spence fight. So there's so many intangibles about this fight, man. It really is um, yeah. one of those fights that you could easily make a case for either side winning. Um, right, so 
I know you've been chomping at the bit to get your predictions in. I kind of know where this is going to go, but let's start with James. Um, well, it's I funny. I know you where just, you're it's funny you just brought up that that Sean Porter quote because I think that's a perfect. Uh, how should I say analogy for how I see this fight going who's going to be able to implement their game plan as you said Errol Spence he said he's going in there to rough him up he's going in there to take his soul to beat him is Terence Crawford going to be able to maintain composure and make it a technical boxing bout is he going to be able to stand on the back foot is he going to be able to be slick catch him with accurate punches but not turn it into an absolute slugfest or is Errol Spence going to be too powerful is he going to be too aggressive for Terence Crawford to deal with. That's the, that is basically the question of how this fight is going to go. If Errol Spence is able to make it his fight, then he has a very, very big chance of knocking Terence Crawford out. I just feel Terence Crawford is too smart. He's too technically savvy. Defensively, he's too good. And I don't see that. I don't see him being dragged into a dogfight. And I see him making it more of a technical boxing fight. And in that technical boxing bout, I see him being clear of Errol Spence in those areas. And I think that's exactly what's going to happen. He's going to make him walk onto shots. And slowly as the rounds go on, go on, go on, he's going to be picking him apart more and more and more. And as you said, he's a very, very accurate puncher, Terence Crawford. And I think he will buzz him a couple of times. But I don't think he'll do enough to get Errol Spence out of there. I think he will just kind of walk through to a decision win. Decision win. Nick? Yeah, I think Crawford wins. Um, I just think he's a more well-rounded fighter. I don't know how much... Maybe you could make an argument that Errol Spence is so good on the attacking side that we don't see him have to defend too much in his career. Mm. Um, but I think they're, they're both similar level in terms of attacking, but I think Crawford has better defensive attributes or at least be better defensive attributes that we've seen. Mm. Um, so it's going gonna, it's gonna, to... You know, Spence is going to have to go in there and be aggressive because he's not going to want... Terence Crawford to make it his own style of fight. Um, yeah, I think I might go Terence Crawford on points. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It may, it may be a late stoppage, but I think I'm, I'm a gut saying points. It's, you know, they're going to both be prepared for a long fight. They're both going to be in camp expecting things to go a long time because you can't look at the guy opposite you with the records that they've got and be too confident that you're going to go in there and knock him out. And if, if you don't, you've got to have a plan B. They'll both be prepared for 12 rounds. Yep, yep. Interesting insights from both of you and assessments there. Um, I'll tell you what I found interesting uh, in the last couple of days as this fight nears is that since the, since the um, Fulton Inoue fight, which you can kind of make some comparisons whereby Inoue was the smaller man um, and you saw what he did to the bigger guy. Some people suggesting that Crawford will do a similar type, maybe not as resounding, but a similar type thing to... Um, Spence and I can see where they're going with that a little bit. But Fulton's bit. more of a boxer whereas Spence is more of a KO artist. I don't no, think I think what they were looking at yeah, in terms smaller of guy taking the, out the guy. smaller guy and him being the more um, stepping quicker. Up in, stepping up in weight as well. Yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of people are saying, listen, Fult um, Inoue showed what can happen when a guy's very quick when he's got power. And I'm on record as saying that Crawford's the most accurate puncher in world accurate, boxing, in my yeah, opinion. He's, yeah. he's, he doesn't waste, they're both very accurate, but Crawford doesn't waste any punches. But yeah. the only thing I would say to dispute that, again, not to hark on about it too much, he is 35 years of age, and the first thing that goes as you start to age is your speed and your reflex. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and that's your a good point as well. I mean, if, so it's if you're talking about him free. having the increase, I know, but mm -hmm. I'm saying both of you are going to lose your speed. So if you're talking about Inoue, the main thing that he had was his incredible speed and reflexes. Speed and in athleticism, that fight, which, which, to be fair, Crawford uh, marks highly for speed and athleticism as well. He does. Uh, and he he's does. also a well preserved 35, because, mm -hmm. like I said, he's not been in any wars. Um, he's pretty much beat everyone up he's fought, apart from a few guys that have had the odd area of success against him but he's pretty much dominated all the fights he's been in um How but do you for see me it going? yeah yeah for yeah. me so let's start with errol spence i think if errol spence is going to win this fight he's got to establish his size and strength we think he's the stronger man we know he's the bigger man um he's got slightly longer dimensions um he's got to try and push crawford back one of the things i saw yesterday with Inoue and Fulton was that as soon as I saw Inoue pushing Fulton back, I thought, this is a red flag for Fulton. And if you get to Saturday 
and you see Crawford start to push Spence back, I think that's it. I think Crawford will win. Um, so first and foremost, Spence has got to try and establish his size and strength. What we Because we know Crawford is strong. We also know that Crawford comes from a wrestling background, so he can handle himself in the clinches. But I think in terms of forward motion, Errol Spence has got to establish that. Um, he's southpaw, as we said. He's got to get in behind that jab. That body attack that he's well known for, he's got to deploy that. He's got to try and weaken Crawford to the body, put the pressure on him, lean on him, make him feel that he's in a hard fight from literally round one. He's got to, the pressure's got to build because I don't think he's going to be able to outbox Crawford. I think Crawford is a better boxer. I think he's a bit sharper. Not to say that Spence can't box because he is a very good boxer, but I think Crawford definitely has the edge in terms of speed, in terms of skill, um, and maybe even power. But I think there is uh, a window of opportunity for Spence to win this fight, but he's got to make it his own fight. He's got to make it grueling. He's got to make it a war of attrition. And basically just try and chase Terence Crawford down. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, pick that's, his moments. Mm -hmm. He's got to pick his moments well. Yeah, he can't be reckless. Um, he's got, I mean, Spence does deploy a high guard. He's not one of those guys that's just going to be rolling in and with reckless abandon. He, he does like to manoeuvre behind a jab, which is the correct way to do it. When he gets inside, he's got to let those shots go to the body. He's got to try and hurt Crawford early to make him know that, listen, man, you're in with a big, strong welterweight here. Similarly, Crawford, he's got to pick his spots. Um, he won't necessarily be all, like, wanting to get the center of the ring straight away. He might be happy to box um, for a couple of rounds, download the information, download the data, make adjustments. And then slowly but surely, just outbox or counter yeah, you, it. You mentioned a new way, Fulton. I, I would liken this fight the way I could see it playing out to like uh, Mayweather Mosley. Mm. That type of that type of getting hit early and then making those adjustments and then st so once, you you, think, once you get into you that think, rhythm. You uh, think Spence is going to rock him early? I think Spence. I think once he feels that power and downloads the information, I think there's a chance that if Spence. Is, does what he says he's going to do and tries to come in and be aggressive. He has mm -hmm. ample ability to land a clean flush punch. That's not beyond the realms of possibility. Mm. And then for uh, for um, Bud Crawford to, mm -hmm. to then start to manoeuvre the right way, you know, mm -hmm. as, as Spence's gas tank hits over 50%, not that Spence has a bad gas tank, but then- No, not at all. In fact, gas tank pressing. is one of his strong points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the people, who have been in there have actually said he seems to get stronger as the fight goes on. Certainly yeah. the way the fights are played out. When it comes to attritional boxing, Spence is right up there with yeah. the best fighters in the game. So I think, I'm pretty sure that's going to be his game plan. Well, he's pretty much said that. He yeah. said he's going to break him down. He feels confident that he can push Crawford back, put the pressure on him, hit him to the body and um, break him down bit by bit. Obviously the danger in doing that is that Crawford is a very sharp boxer, good counter puncher, and he Stout will land. For you. And when he does land, he will try and go in for the kill. So at some point, man, this, this fight is definitely going to explode. I'm expecting it to be at first very technical, but not soon after. Yeah, it's going to get end. very entertaining. Yep. And um, you know what? I, <laughs> I would slightly lean towards Crawford. I've got to admit that because when the fight was first made, I did go for Crawford. Um, I do think he's slightly got the edge in terms of skills. He's shown that since he's gone up to welterweight, he's got more than enough power to hurt people and take them out. So I would slightly lean towards Crawford, but it wouldn't be surprised me if Spence was to win. No, of course. Because I'm 100%. looking at, um, I mean, 50, obviously 55. they're both very motivated, but I'm looking at the body language of Spence and he really does look up for it. He mm -hmm. said he's willing to put everything on the line and sometimes it could come down to who wants it most. Yeah. It could come down to that size and strength that we've been talking about. So... I think it's that gonna is be one exactly hell of a what night, it comes man. down to who wants it most. Because it could well, when you it could when well two, do. the two men are so evenly matched in so many areas of their game, like I said, yes, I do believe Crawford has slightly better technical ability, but he's not leaps and shoulders above uh, Errol Spence in, mm -hmm. that in that sense either. They both contain a lot of power. It is going to come down to who is going to be hungrier, who is going to be on their game more. Hopefully they both have a non-night and we see the best out of them both, which I believe we will. But who is going to be able to deal with the pressure of this? Somebody Zo has got to go. It's a draw. <laughs> it I'm going to be mad <laughs> if this ends up as a draw. Certainly some of the stuff I've seen in, in recent days suggests a lot of people are going for Crawford and some of them are going for late stoppage because they think it'd be too accurate 
he'll, um, he'll be able to hit Spence and he'll hit him too hard. And like I said before, Crawford is a killer. So if he senses blood, he will go after and as, him. Like I say, as much as we say that we've seen Crawford get buzzed, that could go against Spence because we don't really know. He's been so good offensively. We don't know what his chin is like. He hasn't really been in those real tough wars. I know that maybe Sean Porter is one fight that we could look at, but we really don't know what it's like when he's, mm. get it, when he's on the receiving end of that type of damage. Mm, mm. Listen, man, the more we talk, the more you start to second guess yourself. But I think it's fair to say you're still going with Crawford, right? Yes. I'm and just you're going with Crawford. Crawford. Always. Yeah. Always. <laughs> Always. Um, I'm, what did Shane mm. do? Shane take Crawford, I think. Yeah, Shane will be out there, so yeah. um, we'll be contacting Shane. and He'll be out there with his Philly boys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as for me, I think, you know what? I started off going for Crawford. I guess I've got to stick with Crawford. I would like to see Spence win. I do like both guys, but I'll tell you why. Because Spence, he's got that Jamaican heritage that I have. Yeah. So we have something in common in that regard. But that's not to say, listen, man, may the best man win. It's going to be a great fight. Um, I'm a big fan of Crawford. I'm a big fan of Spence. And the one thing I can categorically say is that this is going to be a great fight. Can and I think it will live up to the billing, certainly my billing, of the most anticipated fight in boxing since 2015. But people out there, let us know what you think. Um, a, do you think it's the biggest fight since 2015? Do you think we're over-egging it a little bit? Do you think there are other fights that have been just as big, if not better? If so, tell us which fights. Um, do you agree with our assessments of the fight? Um, what do you see as the key determining factors? Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell for more content from DR Sports and DR Sports Boxing. We are out. Don't forget, people, that we will be doing a live stream of the fight in the early hours of Sunday morning. Um, the three of us here will be in, in the house, yeah? Yeah. And uh, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to this fight, man. Yeah. So check it out. Make sure you're with us on, well, the early hours of Sunday morning. Take care. <laughs> we're out.